takes are much, much more fun than regular takes. You see everything happen. So I think at the end of the day, the technique of the rifling hits will dramatically increase your numbers of fish. The hits fly is very, very simple. And as more simple it is, the better it gets. So I'm in like the hitch capital of the world, Reykjavik, with Mr. Balderson. Uh, Arnie, you are one of these guys that have been catching thousands of fish on the hitch. But, 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 I, I mean, what's so special with hitching? Well, Mike, uh, I totally agree. Iceland must be the mecca for uh, hitching salmon. I'm sure about that because all these small gin clear rivers is uh, ideal for for hits. What is special about refilling hits is uh, I think it's number one it's very important because it increases uh, your catches a lot. Without the refilling hits uh, you will catch less salmon because uh, the refill hits kind of uh, drags the salmon up to the surface they get over excited you can go over a pool many times. You can go over a pool with different kind of flies, with whatever small francis, long tail, black and blue. You will catch fish, but you might catch nothing. But you still know there is a lot of fish in that pool, head and tailing. And then you put the hitch fly on, <coughs> and you have to work out the speed. The speed is the most important of the hits, it's the size and the speed. That's the thing. It's like with all fishing, size and speed. Size, size and, sp and, and, and speed. And eventually you find this out and uh, they, 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 they come aggressively on it. They can come gently, but they can come completely out of the water, as you know, yeah. and take it on the way down, like they yeah. take sun ray. So I think at the end of the day, the technique of the riffling hits will dramatically increase your numbers of fish especially you know in the late summer when the water is getting low and the temperatures are high and the fish are not moving to the fly then the rifling hits is the thing i like it a lot especially if uh, uh, plenty of fish uh, and aggressive fresh So you say size and speed. I mean, I, I love hitching, <laughs> and uh, I caught a few, like you, a few fish on the hitch. But I, I'm I'm trying to to figure out here what are the important things here, and try to to spread this. You say size and speed. That's the most important keys to hitching. And ankle, how you cast it. Uh, it depends. For me, a small hitch, I fish very straight down, you know, what you call it, 40, 90, no, 45 degree. Yeah. You know, without and, any bow in the line. Without any bow, I just, you know, and the micro hits like that. When the hits get bigger and bigger, I want more belly into it. Okay. And when I'm hitching Sonia Seato, I cast that fly completely cross over, what do you call that, 95 maybe? 90, yeah. yeah or something like that. And then I wait for a few seconds until the belly goes down. Yeah. And I want to strip that riffled San Reciato in the U, in the U, you know, yeah, across yeah. the river. So it starts to go downstream and then it goes in the belly and comes upstream again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as bigger the fly is, the faster you need to strip. Good. The bigger the fly, the faster the fly, yeah. right? Yeah. But when you're gonna when you're gonna hitch, what's uh, what's the important things to think about? Uh, you have to cast 45 degrees, and you have to mend, and you have to control the mend. Fly. What way? Mend up upstream. Okay. Upstream, and then you have to pull the rod up, and pull the fly so you control it right away. Okay. You just hit, and you mend, you pull, rod up, 
and then you see the fly and then it's starting to hit. You don't hitch it on a downstream belly? No. Okay. You have to have it down below you, you know, mend one time and then control, then you can mend again to slow it a little bit more. Okay. And then you get a take. So, but how many fish you caught on it? Many. In my life? On a hitch, no. You caught, yeah, if I say you caught a thousand fish on a hitch. Much more. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to hear more. <laughs> Very good on it. And the thing is, it's not only the small fish that come for the hitch. Big fish as well. Yeah. Yeah, big fish as well. Well, with a, if your fish over big fish, you might, and you know there are big fish in the pool, and you're fishing for that fish, you might have to slow down your hits a little bit because they are heavy and they're lazy so they might miss it if you <laughs> if you speed it up too much uh, i had one on the sail out two years ago on the hits that was the biggest fish in iceland for for a long time 31 pounds nice and he came on a small riffle hits i had no idea about that fish he was in a deep pool uh, but i fished this pool with the different flies and nothing put uh, the hits on and he came and now again, when I was in Sela two weeks ago, I met the same size fish, 30, over 30 pounds again. Oh. And he really loved the hits, but he was so big and so heavy, and he missed it all the time. <laughs> and eventually he gave up, and I, I did not see him again. Okay. So he missed it. You know, they're, they're a little bit more clumsy, these big fish. Big yeah. fish yeah. You know, they're not like the grills. The grills are very accurate. Yeah, Just yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but do you think that temperature is the key here? Do they come to the hitch even on a cold river? Well, I would not. I start to hitch at 8 degrees in the okay. water. 10 is good, 12 is perfect, 14 is... But, know, and deadly. that goes not only for Iceland, from all over the world. All over the world. Yeah. I'm hitching a lot. Do you think salmon are different in different parts of the world? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't really think so because when I go to Canada, I fish Icelandic way, and yeah. I do very very well. When I go to Norway, I do the same. In Russia, I do. The, I use the same technique, and it works. It yeah. works very well. The thing with Iceland, when you fish a lot in Iceland, you learn so much about the behavior of the fish because the rivers are so small here. And there are many you're fish. In amongst yeah. the fish all the time. Yeah. And right. you learn how the fish are behaving. Yeah. And then when you go to the bigger rivers in Russia and Norway and Canada, you benefit from this experience, you know. And what's, uh, what's the secrets? I mean, how do you do it? Uh, you, you, put, you put, for example, you have here uh, hitching tubes, for example, Here's a good sample of it. You put the nylon inside here and out and make a small triple hook to control the tip on the wave of the riffle. If you put it always in, then it have a rough riffle. But if you, but if you take it out, it get gentle. So you can control it. And there is a mistake that you think a, a, a mirror water to the best rifle. It can also be in, in fast water. Okay, and what's what's the secret? How, you say control the the ripple. How how do you? Uh, what is good and what is not? Uh, there is not good that you have a bubble around around the, the, the ripple hitting. If you get the bubble speed too much, that is bad. And if you don't have a steady speed on it, that is also bad. Okay. And more. What about sizes? I mean, uh, we hitch big sun rays, and you hitch these tiny little millimeter flies. Yes. Uh, it the tiny one work better, I think, uh, on my opinion. But sometimes, if you have to wake them up, it's better to hitch with a sun ray or a big big hitching tube, and let it rest for a while, and then go to small. Okay, so these are for, is this your four favorites or? Yeah, this is my four favorites. What is what here and when you use them? Uh, this is uh, Sunray, homemade Sunray on a green tube with blue and black. And you can use this in maybe a little bit bigger river and 
at the end of the pool, if you're gonna hit the pool, you maybe use the micro hits first and then you pick her up. And this here is Langau Fancy. And Langau is a river in Iceland as well, in the south west of Iceland. And <clears throat> some people say if you got Langau Fancy in your box, you don't need more hit flies. Okay. This is sorry, this is Kolskekur here. Icelandic version of of Collie. Okay. Collie dog. Works very well. Uh, <coughs> this is another sunray. Just yellow and black. A little bit smaller. This may be can your beginning fly the pool. What? Why do you call them sunrays? They don't have anything to do with the sunray shadow. I, I, we call everything in Iceland sunrays that have black wings. Okay. Do you always hitch with the hole, or do you do sometimes do the portline hitch with the knot on the side? Oh or? yes. On the on the tube, obviously through the hole. Always through the hole. Well, you can do the hitch on the tube, but. It, it hits, hits is better with the hole in my point of view. I use always the hole on the tubes. Okay. But one of the most deadliest hits in low water or medium water for very gentle fishing, that's single hook, you know, beautiful mm. night talk or sweep or, yeah. or cross field or something. You know, the old classic way, a single hook and with a Portland hitch, it's very effective. It's kind of to totally different hitching because the fly comes half out of the water and it's it's totally different wake of the mm. water than with the hitch tube. Mm. And I think with this single hook hitching, maybe at some stage it's more deadly than the tube. Uh -huh. The tube is so easy, it hits by itself, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just hits, you just throw it out there and it hits by itself. But with a traditional fly on a single hook, you really have to do it much more. Lift up the rod and pull, you know, pull the line. And once you do it right, it hits. The wake is totally, totally different. And they, they cannot stand it, they grab it. Mm -hmm. When you when you get into extreme conditions like almost hopeless, low water, dead low, fish are not taking, then we are talking about small wake, micro yeah. hits and small wake, tiny, yeah. tiny, gentle wake, and they love that. And when you talk about micro, you talk about yeah, like yes. <laughs> something days. like this. Yeah, hook number 16, 18. Yeah. The end. Micro, micro hits. This is extremely effective when everybody is going home because there are no f the because the fish are not biting. And also for the bigger fish. Also for the bigger fish. Mm, that's also th something people don't understand, I think. Yeah. So actually, when the water is that low, everybody is going home because p people think it's hopeless. It's not hopeless. Micro hits, long liter very thin and you, you catch fish. It's amazing how these fish will wake up for, for micro hits. But again, normal water or high water, big wave, you know, then you want some uh, more action on the surface. Mm. Then I allow myself to strip faster and bigger hits and things like that. But I had a telephone call from a friend of mine who was fishing in Norway. And in Norway they don't use hits that much, or hardly at all. And he was fishing at Laxalvan, and he'd been fishing there for three days without catching fish. And we were talking, and he, he said, well, there are fish here, I'm seeing they're all over the place. And I said to him, put on refilling hits, proper decent size, keep it on for all three days, even if you're not catching fish, don't take it off. Keep your faith into that fly. Fish it continuously for the next three days only. You have nothing to lose. He called me on the last evening on his trip. He caught 11 fish on refilling heads in Norway when no one was catching fish. This proves how strong technique this is.
and spot him and right when you see him start moving, get it up and he will definitely swallow it.